So this story starts with me browsing eBay for broken old computers to try to fix them. So this is a Macintosh LC from 1990. The LCs were the entry level Macs and Apple sold about half a million of them. Notice that this one is listed as untested, which basically always seems to mean that, they're, that they are broken. This one's really badly yellowed as well. So I bought this computer. You see me unpacking it here. And there were quite a few things wrong with this. And I'm gonna show you all the things I had to do to get it to work again. So yeah, really looks awful with that yellowing on the case. So the first thing to do is to remove that battery from the main logic board. Those batteries leak and they destroy the PCB. So I tried to plug in the board, see if I could get it to start, and there was no chime. Um, what I realized was that the voltage rails coming out of the power supply were all wrong. They were like one volts and three volts. The machine wasn't gonna start. So the next thing I decided to do was to completely disassemble uh, the, the system. And the nice thing about these LC Macs is they're completely toolless. You can basically strip out the insides uh, without using a screwdriver. They just all clip together. So this was the problem with the power supply. Um, that black mold that you can see on the PCBs there, that's actually electrolyte from the capacitors that has leaked onto the board. Um, now, it looks worse than it actually is because uh, what I did was I scraped it away and I realized that it's actually eating the solder mask and not the traces underneath, and that was lucky. Um, uh, here's one of the capacitors. You can see uh, that I took off. It's, it's oozing. It looks awful. Um, so to fix this power supply, I had to replace all of the capacitors that were on the secondary side of this power supply unit, and then the, the right voltage rails uh, uh, came out. Um, However, there was still a problem. You can see this, this clip here was also broken inside the connector. It took me ages to find that. Um, so it still wouldn't work after getting the right voltages out of the power supply. So the next order of business is to replace all of the electrolytic capacitors that are actually on the main board. And these are surface mount. Uh, the way uh, I've chosen to remove them is to basically just snip them off. Um, and then uh, use a soldering iron to remove the, the kind of remaining legs of the capacitors and then clean up the pads. So I'm gonna replace these uh, capacitors with uh, tantalum surface mount capacitors, and these should last a lot longer than the original electrolytic ones. Uh, so there's a lot of capacitors on this board to replace. So we're gonna run this uh, time-lapse in high speed, and I'm gonna put a little bit of music on. So now that all of those capacitors are replaced, let's see what we can do about the state of that yellowed case. So just using this OxyClean, and um, I have um, worked in this bath, and you can see uh, that's coming out really, really well. There's still yellow on this one side here. Um, We put it back in for just a few more hours to complete the retrobriting process. So I think we're ready to reassemble. So it all clips back together. 
So first in is uh, the main logic board. And then this is the fan and speaker assembly. The fan pulls in air from the bottom, power supply. Uh, then the hard drive, uh, plugging that into the board. More on the hard drive later, actually. Um, and then finally, um, the floppy disk drive. Now, before we power this up, um, I wanted to show you uh, the results, the kind of final results of that retrobriting process. Do a bit of a side-by-side -side comparison. So here you see it after the retrobriting and um, with OxyClean. And there you see the case as it arrived. So it's completely transformed. Uh, you can't see any of that yellowing. It all looks consistent and all the same color. It's really amazing. This took about eight hours outside uh, in the OxyClean bath in the sunlight. So it looks fantastic. So let's get on and power it up. So the chime occurred, that's cool. But the screen's still white. And this is a kind of a really kind of long, tense moment that I thought I would voice over and share with you. Cool, there's a screen. Okay. Welcome to Macintosh. So this next bit is sped up because it actually takes quite a long time to boot. This Macintosh. So there you can see it has 10, uh, 10 megabytes of RAM, which is the most that a Mac LC system 7.1. Um, and it's got 6.4 meg free after booting up. That's awesome. So this repair probably took about four weeks in elapsed time. And that's doing things like ordering parts, waiting for them to arrive, and then getting to the next issue. But this Mac LC is now all working, uh, and it's working well. You can see the hard drive was working fine at this point, but the next day the hard drive failed with some sort of mechanical failure. And unfortunately, I don't have a spare drive that I could put in the machine. So I started to look into hard drive replacements like Blue SCSI or RASCSI. The RASCSI uses a Raspberry Pi and an SD card. Uh, if you're interested in seeing me build a RASCSI on a breadboard, drop a comment below. And if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. So I'll see you in the next video.